remember a member of the bishopric coming in and talking about how wonderful women were because if it wasn't for the women, there would not be tablecloths on the tables and centerpieces as flowers on the tables and the church would look very bland. And that was what yeah. women were for. We were there to decorate and make something beautiful, not have significant value. So Right. Well, and I don't want to devalue the role of beautifying an area, right? But that is kind of a gaslighting thing in that you're making that the importance of a woman. And that's not equality. That's right. not equal opportunity in the church. That is the women doing well the role that they've been given. Not the same thing. Not at all. And, and I'm tired a little bit of... I've listened to lots of people talk, Spencer W. Kimball, way back in 1979, talking about how the role are, of women and men in the church is equal. And we've been, we've been spouting this rhetoric for a long, long time, and Ooh. only now, recently... I love that you call it rhetoric. I think that's what it is. Because? Because it is an attempt to... It is an attempt, in my opinion, it is an attempt to make women feel that the roles they've been given is adequate and equal for them. And I don't think that it is. Now, so <clears throat> the dictionary definition of the word rhetoric is the art of effective or persuasive speaking or writing, especially the use of figures of speech and other compositional techniques. Um, language design, language designed to have a pervas- persuasive or impressive effect on its audience, but often regarded as lacking in sincerity or meaningful content. Well, I, I would say love that word for this. I would say that I used the right word, I and that agree. I used it accurately, and I use it exactly the way that the way that I meant. Love is it. that there is a lot of effort especially recently, there's a lot of effort to placate our sisters. And there's another word that I think I use completely correctly, to placate the sisters in order to make them feel comfortable within the assigned role that they've been given. And we're seeing recently... So that they're complicit and will shut up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but we spend a lot of time asking our sisters to speak up. To speak out, to share their inspiration, Mm -hmm. to share their stuff. But the reality is your inspiration as a sister is entirely dependent upon the effect that it will have on the church Mm -hmm. is entirely dependent upon a man somewhere. Yes. Entirely. Even in your own home, much of your quote unquote inspiration is dependent upon your husband because if you're living the role correctly, you're working together as a husband and wife. Well, that means husband has veto power over your inspiration. No, I don't like that. I don't think that's going to work out well for us. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. And you can be good partners and still have that sort of thing going on. Absolutely. Your role is subjugated by the priesthood authority that exists in um <laughs> did you just burn looking, out no i'm just looking for the word the priesthood authority exists in totality in the church the priesthood authority runs everything even the organizations that the women are a part of and john larson brought this up they're called auxiliaries they don't matter to the overall role according to the priesthood authority of the church. Right. And in, assess- in essence, they're saying we could, as a church, we'd survive just fine without the Relief Society. We'd survive just fine without the young women's or the primary. We'd be just fine. Right. The auxiliaries are there to keep the women and children busy and out of our hair while we do the important work. 